Well, hello there and welcome to another exciting edition of School of the Spirit. I'm so happy to come your way again and I really, really am grateful to God, especially for every one of us that have followed um, the previous episodes till this point. I, I believe that we are on a journey in our walk with God and um, every as we progress every episode is um, meant to bring about clarity it's um, deeper revelations to bring clarity and understanding to us about the ways of the spirit uh, so that we can grow to a point of mastery God wants us to gain mastery he wants us to know him and the God that we serve is a spirit so if we must know him we must know him within the context or the frame of his reference we must know him in the spirit and the reason why the Holy Spirit was given to us is so that we may know all the things that we have freely received from God including the knowledge of his ways you know that's first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 that we have received the spirit not of the world but the spirit that is of God that we may know the things that are freely given to us and one of those things is the knowledge of his ways knowing him knowing his methods of doing things and so school of the spirit is meant to help us explore all through to wherever the Holy Spirit will carry us to and that being said, I thought we were done with prayers. Transformation by prayer, we've been talking about uh, the transformation, the change that happens to a believer through the activity of prayer. And we have about six episodes on that. And you can do well to check the description box below uh, to watch all of those episodes. But I thought we we're done with that so we could move on to something else but the lord began to impress in my heart the need to speak more about prayer and so that prompted what we are going to discuss about today now i believe you know prayer uh, basically is the lifeline of communication with god and um, anything that has to do with communicating with God is definitely uh, something that should be understood. Uh, we need to know how to relate with God. We need to know how to fellowship with God. We need to know His terms of doing things and all that um, the benefits and the advantage that um, the attendant privileges that we stand to gain in the place of prayer. So we are going to go um, a lot more deep uh, from this episode so but before we go on I like to say a word of prayer and then we begin father thank you for everyone watching and listening right now and I ask Lord that by your spirit you will open their eyes open our understanding help us to learn deep things and cause us to be transformed in Jesus name amen so we're going to talk about praying in troubled times. I was just inspired by the Holy Spirit um, for us to discuss on that. Praying in troubled times. And then maybe after this um, episode, maybe we're also going to go talk about the basics of prayer so we can have a full understanding. But for now, let's just dwell on the subject matter praying in troubled times i want to read a scripture for us and then i'll begin from there the scripture i want to read is in psalm 61 from verse 1 to 2. it says hear my cry O god attend to my prayer from the end of the earth i will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So the psalmist is giving us an expression here. He's praying in a time when he's burdened with a lot of problems. He says, my heart is overwhelmed. My heart is heavy. And there are many 
scenarios, many um, activities that can happen in the life of a man to bring him to that state that your heart becomes heavy. Maybe grieving over the loss of a loved one or failing an exam or not getting a particular job offer after the rigorous procedures of writing tests and sitting for interviews and all of that or not clinching a good sales deal within a particular season or just experiencing declines here and there in one area of your life. Um, these and many other things could lead to the overwhelming state of the heart of a man and when your heart is heavy, it affects your emotions negatively. Um, it affects every part of you. You know, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And out of the heart flows the issues of life. So everything that affects your heart, which is the core aspect of your being, affects your entire life. And here we find that the psalmist is overwhelmed, is burdened. The Bible was not clear to let us know why. But we find that he is burdened. And this probably for many Christians, uh, this is the wrongest time to even think of praying. You know, we, we have the tendency to always think it's good to pray when everything is okay, when everything is right. But sometimes you are just so messed up emotionally or mentally and it becomes difficult to even pray and to commune with God or engage in any spiritual activity. And that's why we're on this episode today, praying in troubled times. How do you pray? How do you communicate with God in times when you are troubled, when you are in sorrow, when you are grieved, when you are overwhelmed, when you are burdened, when you don't even feel like praying, when it even seems like you are mad at God? Maybe you lost a loved one and, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, probably the person was sick and all through the time they were sick you prayed and fasted and did everything you could I think there's one example like that in scripture it's it's David um, in, in 2nd Samuel chapter 12 you know he had a son with Beth Bathsheba and the, the child became sick and for seven days he kept praying and fasting and did everything he could do for God to hear him and to show mercy on that child and heal the child. But eventually the child died. And, um, you know, when you get to that stage, it becomes very difficult. You are, you are so grieved that you can't even pour out your heart again. Probably someone even watching right now, this may be your situation or what you are going through. I want to show you how you can still navigate your way into the presence of God how you can still sustain communion with God in prayer. And uh, that's what we're going to look at today. So David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In other words, this is the point where I need you to strengthen me, Lord. This is the point where I need you to lift me. It looks like I'm down, sinking in, in a, 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 a big black hole of misery, of pain, of, of anxiety, of trauma. So he says, lead me to a rock. You know, a rock is a very firm uh, stone. Uh, you know, when you, when they, they use the strength of a rock to, to, to best describe the, 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 you know, the authenticity of a foundation. And so David is saying, at this point, I need you to lift me, to carry me and set me on a pedestal that is beyond my capacity now. Praying in troubled times. Now, I heard something somewhere. I was listening to a preacher years ago, and he, he, said, he said something about prayer that I really embrace, and I want to talk about that uh, and use that as a template for our discussion today. He said, prayer is a sacrifice to God, a shield to the soul, and a scourge to Satan. So I call it the three S of prayer. A sacrifice to God, a shield to the soul, and a scourge. You know, the word scourge means to punish, to chastise, a punishment to the devil. 
So I think I'm more concerned about the first two, when prayer becomes a sacrifice to God and a shield to your soul. You know, when you are going through troubled times or moments where you are emotionally and mentally down, Uh, it becomes difficult to participate in spiritual activities. At that point, prayer for you becomes like a sacrifice because it's coming from a place of inconvenience. It's coming from a place of pain. It's coming from a place of trauma. So at that point, it's a sacrifice that you offer to God when you pray despite your grief, when you pray despite your pain, when you pray despite your trauma it's a sacrifice because it's not convenient it's coming from deep state of you know being uncomfortable but you still realize that i have to talk to god i have to commune with god because this is why i was created because this is why we were made to fellowship with god at that point prayer becomes a sacrifice but also prayer is a shield to your soul And that's where we are going to really dwell on today. How does prayer become a shield to your soul? You know, in Ephesians 6, 16, the Bible says, taking up above all things, taking up the shield of faith with which you quench the fairy darts of the enemy. A shield is a defensive weapon in the field of battle. And we're talking about prayer becoming a shield to your soul, a defense. Because when you go through pain, when you go through traumatic situations, when you feel psychologically or emotionally down or tormented, um, your, your mind, which is a compartment in your soul, becomes fragile to fear, becomes, uh, I think I should use the word vulnerable. Your mind becomes vulnerable to fear, becomes vulnerable to anxiety, becomes vulnerable to doubt, it's exposed to negative influences and you know that can really affect your faith as a believer in fact it affects your entire state you become unproductive so at that point you need the strength generated in prayer to shield you from the enemies of your soul which are the things i have just listed right now these are things that The moment they get into your soul and penetrate your mind, you become unproductive. You are rather filled with worries. And from worries, it becomes anxiety. And and at that state, there's really nothing you can do. So it is the strength generated in prayer that brings that shield round about your soul. That's why the psalmist said in Psalm 61, where we read, he says, Hear my cry and attend to my prayer from the ends of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed I will cry because I know that somehow even in this mess I still need strength and support from the Lord that's why I will still cry and pray even when I'm going through troubled times you know many people feel that when they are going through pain and trouble they should just be isolated from other people isolated from God and until they get better but the truth is, what, what better place to heal in times of trouble than the presence of God? The presence of God remains the only environment that is therapeutic enough for the healing of your soul when you go through trouble. But most times we, are, we, we, we fall into the temptation of running away from the presence. And you know, that's exactly what Adam and Eve did you know, in, in Genesis. When they fell, they tried to run away from God. They tried to hide from God. And you see, prayer is actually hiding in God. Prayer is hiding in God because you withdraw into the presence of God. Allow Him to saturate you with His peace and joy. And then He shields you and protects you. He helps you to trust Him. He helps your faith to stay alive even when there is no circumstance in the natural that suggests so. So prayer is hiding in the presence of God. And that's where you draw your strength from. That's where you draw your energy from. That's where you recuperate. That's where you are healed and restored. 
I'd like to read two more scriptures uh, before we bring this to an end. Psalms 31. Or rather, let's do Psalms 32. Psalms 32. I said prayer is hiding in God. Hear this. Psalms 32 verse 7. Well, let's start from verse 6. It says, For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. Now, you see, the, that's, that's a metaphorical uh, 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 description. When it says, every, most times when the Bible uses flood or waters, it's speaking of adversity. It's speaking of being overwhelmed and surrounded by adversity, by trouble. So it says, surely in a flood of great waters, that means in a time of trouble, in a time of pain, of misery, when you seem to be surrounded by negative situations and circumstances. It says, for this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray. The best option in these troubled times will be to turn to God in prayer. That's why it says, for this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you. Now let's read verse 7. It says, You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. You are my hiding place. So God becomes our shield. God becomes the refuge where we can withdraw into to hide and be healed when we go through troubles when we go through prunes. You must realize that God is the creator of our souls. There is no one who understands the soul of man better than God. Not even man understands his soul like God. You know, many times we have desires that we can't articulate. It happens sometimes. Let's say, for instance, you are hungry, but you don't really know what you want to eat. That's an, an example. Or you want to go out of the house, but you don't really know where you would like to go to. There are times we have desires that we can't articulate. That shows you that we don't fully understand our souls. But no one understands your soul than the bishop and the shepherd of your soul, which is Jesus Christ. So every time we go through troubles, the best thing to do is to run into God, into the presence of God, and hide in Him. And that happens when we pray. It says, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. Preserve doesn't necessarily mean he'll take the trouble away. No, he doesn't always do that sometimes. What he does is he gives you peace in the midst of the storm. What he does is he helps you receive strength to a point where you outlast the problem. I always say that every problem has expiring dates. But one thing that doesn't expire is you. So God preserves you through the problem. When it fades out and everything, the storms roll away, you discover that you are still standing. And not only that, the Bible says He surrounds you with songs of deliverance. Sometimes as you pray in the midst of your pain, as you stay communing with God, as you stay in the place of prayer, fellowshipping with God, sometimes songs begin to break forth from your heart, from your spirit. They could be songs you know, they could be melodious tunes you are used to, they could be strange songs. That song is actually a stream of the river of the Spirit of God flowing through your soul to bring healing. It's not just a song. In fact, in Job 35 verse 10, Job said, Where is God my God who gives songs in the night seasons? The night seasons there uh, is a simile or, or uh, uh, a, a, a metaphor to describe tough and turbulent times, troubled times. He says even in those seasons, God gives you songs. These are called songs of deliverance. These are songs that will cause you to break forth into joy even when you are surrounded with pain, even when you are surrounded with sadness. These are songs that begin to lubricate your heart with the peace of God, begin to bring you assurance to know that it is well with you. There's a popular hymn that we usually sing in, in, in church. 
when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows o'er, whatever my Lord thou hast assured me to know, it is well with my soul. Now I want to pray for you. I don't know what you're going through right now, but I want to release my faith with you to declare that it is well with you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, you will experience the shielding effect of prayer. That by prayer, in the midst of your trouble and your pain, may you be withdrawn into the presence of God. May you be hidden in the Lord. And may you be strengthened with His might by the Spirit in your inner man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. This is just the first part. I'm going to see you in the next episode. We're going to go deeper on this subject. And I trust that it will bless you. Thank you.